Hey. Hey. You'll have to say when. Oh, okay. You'll have to. Oh, well, maybe it is good that I'm not wearing white. <laughs> Shit. <Put it> off. <laughs> Cheers, Lahaim. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Today on Postmortem, I am joined by Lady Rowe. Hello, pleasure. Thank you for having me. And we're going to watch Rosemary's Baby. First time uh, watching it. I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, it is a, like a horror classic. Right? So, like, I'm it's excited a really to pop good that cherry today. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not too familiar about uh, Roman Polanski's background. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to delve too far into it. <laughs> Let's take this piece of work and analyze it for what it is. Correct, yeah. We are we're just people who are drinking and watching a horror film and giving our opinions on it. We so. just happen to have a camera in front of us. So there you go. You're welcome <laughs> that we do that. So let's hop in. Cool. Enjoy Rosemary's baby. <laughs> <laughs> presents Mia Farrow in a William Castle production, Rosemary's Baby. Review part one. Okay. So we just watched Rosemary's Baby, and we got some things to say. So uh, about two and a half hours, two hours, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first portion of it was... Wait, we do spoilers here, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. I play a trailer. It's like, kind of hard it's... to <laughs> yeah, negotiate that without... That's so bad. The first portion of the film is trying to inundate you with how normal she is. Like, super vanilla and bland. She's a typical 1950s whatever housewife. Yeah, the, the, perfect, the perfect wife. It bothers me, but I get that that's the time period. It is, and she knows nothing different. You made a phenomenal joke that the only thing that she did for herself was to get a haircut. <laughs> and it wasn't even by Vidal Sassoon. And, and she gets torn down for getting this haircut. It's the only thing that she does and she's excited about. And she's like, I got this haircut. And literally every everyone, especially the men, are just like, that's the biggest mistake you've ever made. Moving here with this husband and meeting these people is the biggest mistake she's ever made. <laughs> Mia Farrow. Cut her own hair, not Vidal Sassoon. On the day, apparently, that Vidal Sassoon passed, 
in a very kindly worded tweet let audiences know hey everybody by the way everything everyone's been giving credit to him for <laughs> i had been doing that for two years if you take anything from this review it's that mia cut her own hair not the doll that's about it that's all we care about, you know. That's about it. We spoke a lot about uh, color themes in the film. Yeah. You're all about that. All about them color themes. <laughs> uh, yellow, green, and mm -hmm. white were uh, pretty pervasive throughout the beginning portion. She only a couple times had like deep reds, and those were usually tied with like passionate moments. She was wearing a red dress, first burst of uh, color once um, she had gotten the haircut. Mm -hmm. She had some agency, mm -hmm. a little, little bit of power, a little of aggressiveness, a little mm -hmm. assertiveness, and then boom, impregnated by the devil. See what happens as a woman in the 1950s? Have a little thought for yourself, and then boom. Devil baby. Devil baby. That's what happens. It's that easy. Uh. <laughs> but maybe. You. I, can you please just. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she drew a uh, penis. Mia is completely aimless. Um, throughout uh, the beginning portion of the film, it seems as though everything happens to her. Uh, multiple dream sequences where um, you focus on her eyes, then you pull out and, oh, she's naked. Oh, this is happening Whoopsie. to her. She has no control over this. I literally made an asterisk and drew boobs. Everything happens to her basically due to a lack of agency. And uh, yeah. <sighs> there's not a lot of music it really only acts as like a transition or in moments of tension but then it kind of relieves itself pretty early it's just it's, it's eerie yeah la, 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 la. Oh, it definitely adds more tension. I remember at one point she had to deal with like a set of keys to either get into some place mm -hmm. or get out of some place. And only at the point where she had to like fajibble with these keys, it was like a bunch of islands. It's like, is she gonna be able to fucking make it out the door? It's basically just like Maynard Ferguson on a soundstage, just like. I have seen this movie before. It's been a really long time. So I didn't remember exactly how it played out. But it was, it's upsetting every time I watch it. She's so innocent and naive and she's just trying to live her life and have a baby and everyone is gaslighting her. Oh yeah, insanely gaslight. Yeah, it's just like, no, no, this is just what it is. You're just insane for feeling as though you feel this different way. That's just like what it is. Whew. Oh yeah, certainly. We cracked a, a very poor joke in that. <laughs> this basic, this movie, this entire group of uh, odd devil worshippers was likened to Congress. It's like just a you know a bunch of old people telling what to do. And Pro was like, like Congress. just like Congress. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> But I feel like the more horrifying realization as a person in the 21st century, a person with a vagina in the 21st century, is being cognizant of the fact that this is just perhaps what it was like back then. Her husband and the neighbor, uh, who's like maybe 40 years older than him, were more than happy just discussing nonchalantly the wife's, uh, you know, perceived future. If ever you were looking for a reason to donate to Planned Parenthood, this film is it. Uh. You can, we're used to seeing really uncomfortable things. We're used to seeing violating things. And I think to me, what's always the hardest to get around is like you losing your mental faculties about something you know is true. Having gal pals, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> your bitches, you need a base. Oh, okay. So even the ending where like she sees like her demon baby and has a breakdown <laughs> and then everyone's like, it's fine. Just be a mother to the spawn of Satan. Just do it, Rosemary. Because she's literally trapped into only one solution. And her solution is to survive, whether that means she then just completely goes insane and joins them or just sets up a long con. I mean, either way, she's just fucked and she's been put in a position she didn't ask to be put in. Ending Motherhood, y'all. <laughs> Too real. I don't know, the movie just made me feel eerie. Yeah, Rosemary's Baby, pretty dark, pretty real, and I feel like that's probably why it is so dark, because mm -hmm. perhaps experiences that women in our lifetime have experienced, and mm -hmm. it was just so gaslit to appear normal that it is just a normal thing. Still could be, like, relevant. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> This has been Postmortem's review of Rosemary's Baby with Lady Ro. Lady Ro. For Roman or Rosemary. But um bum So maybe. Ooh. Yeah, so donate to Planned Parenthood, y'all. A woman should have the right to choose whether or not she should have her double baby. Hmm.